Today's video is sponsored by Bloodline Heroes of Lythus. This game is one of the best looking mobile games that I've ever seen and it has one of the most unique mechanics. And they got a special holiday deal going on right now, but we'll get into that in a second. Bloodline Heroes of Lythus is a hero collector where you can build and customize your own champions in PvE campaigns and in PvP. My favorite part about this game is how you can customize the champions through bloodlines. There's elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lichens, dragonborn, vampires, and more. And what makes this so unique is you can take any two of your own champions, marry them together and they create an offspring with merged characteristics and traits. You want to create a half dragon, half god? You can. Half demon, half werewolf? You can. Which brings me to this awesome update that they just added to the game. A new season is just starting and they're adding a new clan of these lichens that you can get one right now. You can get this champion for free right now just by playing in the Christmas event. And for more free stuff, the game's free to download. You get a free lichen just for playing. And if you use the link down in my description or the QR code, you get a free starter pack. This thing is worth 20 bucks. You get 100,000 gold, 100 diamonds, and three stamina potions. And one more thing with this new season, Season, everyone has a chance to claim Bloodcraft Champion Scarlet, which is a rare combination of demigods and vampires. And on a for real note, the coolest thing about this game is every time they add in a new race to the game, it adds in so many possible combinations with all the pre-existing races already. And if you want to pair two champions together, you can gender swap them to be whatever you want. And each champion comes with two different versions of the same champion, one male, one female. So you can mix and match all the bloodlines in whatever way you want for some crazy combos and traits. What are you going to try? Because I definitely want to see what a Dragonborn with this this new like and they added to the game looks like. So again, check that link down in the description, check that QR code out, get your starter pack and get going into this game. And thank you Bloodline Heroes of Lythus for sponsoring this video. What's up people, I'm the Dungeon Coach. I'm here to take your World of Warcraft game to the next level. I just recently did a video for newbies to the game and the people who have just came to World of Warcraft, maybe came back to World of Warcraft, or it honestly might have some things in there that you keep doing. Because if you're clicking your abilities like this, or if you're turning with a keyboard like this, you should go watch that video, check it out, it'll be in the description. But this is for the settings of the game, which does not sound very exciting, but my God, I trust me, if you just have the right settings, you're gonna have more fun, play the game better. Cause that's what we're all about here on this channel. So here we go, we're gonna get right into it. Support, you know what that is, shop, what's new, all that kind of stuff, okay, great. We're gonna really get into the options of all of this here. You are gonna see what I have for my options and you can have those by all means, but I am not just gonna explain, this is what I use. I want it to customize towards yourself instead of just being like, oh, click these, do this. Sticky targeting is important, I have it on, but if you don't have it on and you target an enemy right here, you can click left click off and it drops your target. If you have sticky targeting on, once you have an enemy, you cannot untarget that enemy unless you literally press escape and back out of it or you target a different enemy. So I think it's important to have. I don't want to accidentally lose my target, right? Um, auto dismount in flight. If you do anything while you're in flight, you dismount. Now, if I turn this off and I actually mount up and everything, I can cast a spell. I'm pressing a spell and it says you can't do that while mounted. But if I turn this back on, now I can and it drops me off. I like to have this on and just have a little responsibility. Now, this has killed me before, but uh, you're okay. Auto cancel away mode means whenever you've been AFK for a while, you get the AFK flag on yourself. Uh, you just move in anything and it takes it away. But if you want to stay AFK and hide away from your friends and stuff and not let them know, you can actually turn this off and then you have to type slash AFK to clear that off the top of your head. But yeah, I'll, I'll be nice. Interact on left click. This is something new. We'll, t we'll show you the interact key down here. The interact key is a, when you have a quest giver and you target the quest giver kind of like old school like like regular video games i guess you can target the person and then you press the interact button to interact with them and like talk to them and bring up a quest log or whatever that they have to offer you i think that's why not just left click it so interact on left click yes please open the loot window at the mouse if i'm looting something and let's say i killed this target dummy which is impossible whatever and let's say i loot it the loot for that would appear where my mouse is I think that that's better. There's also an interface we'll talk about in the edit settings where you can change where that thing comes in at and you can have it always come in in a certain location on your screen. I like to have it come in where my mouse is currently at. And let's be real, we all auto loot anyway, which speaking of auto loot, yes, turn on auto loot. Uh, shift key is what disables or enables auto loot. This is automatically always gonna auto loot. So if I killed five things and there's five different things to loot, I right click it and it automatically loots it, no button required. But if I wanted to specifically do it, I could hold down shift, loot it, and then I would just see what it has to offer and I could click only the things I wanted. This next option combines your bags into a single button. So whenever you open your bags, it's one entire bag. I think that that's better, honestly, in my opinion. For myself, I usually have my hearthstones and everything down here and I have this like 
line of things where everything here and below, I gotta organize my bags real quick. Uh, all of this and below are things I always have here, consumables. Uh, this is the different types of gear I have. So whenever I get new stuff and loot new things, all the new stuff is up here at the top. Enable interact key is the thing I talked about, about having to select it and then press the button. I would not turn on any of these, leave that all alone. Interact sound cue, no. It plays a sound whenever you do the interact thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm not all about it. You can though, you can try it out. Uh, for the mouse, lock cursor to game window just means like, see right now, uh, I have a circle. This is a weak core around my mouse to show where my mouse is at. Uh, but if I move, I have now my screen, my mouse is on another screen floating around up here and then I bring it back down. I go over here and then I bring it back in and it allows it. Now, if I click this on, I am now trapped inside of the game. <laughs> and I like to have my mouse be able to move all over the place. Uh, I think it's better. So I'm going to unlock that. Invert mouse is for the camera pitch. Whoa, that feels weird. So if you have it, uh, this is how the mouse normally works and you can always invert that and it actually it changes it all around, right? So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it how I've always had it because that'd be just weird. Mouse look speed is changes how quickly you, you turn the camera whenever you turn the mouse like this. Now, I how I look around and I hope this is the same way that you do and if you not watch the last video I talked about that's in the description, I right click and then turn. Right click and turn. That's how you should be turning and that's what this affects the speed of. I don't have it be too crazy fast, uh, but six is fine for me. This is mouse sensitivity of how fast the cursor moves. I just have it be the same speed that's on my regular computer. So I'm fine with that. This is disabled and click to move. Oh my God, please do not click to move. Click to move is, oh, look at that. I didn't even know you could play the game like this. I'm right clicking on the ground and my character is running to that location. No, 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 no. This isn't Diablo, people. Get a nope, nope, nope. How you should be moving, if you didn't know, is you should resume your movement keys. Again, I do have a video. I'll put that in the description as well. ESDF. You should be using ESDF for your movement. If you use WASD, you're losing out on an entire thing. Your hand's not in the center of the keyboard. I'll have a whole video on that if you're interested in it. Either way, you should be pressing forward to move backward to move and your left and right, if you, let's just say you're using WASD, W should be moved forward, S should be moved back, a should be strafe left and D should be strafe right. So all you should be able to do without your mouse is this. How do I turn though? How do I turn? You use your mouse, turn yourself around, right, right click, turn. And that's how you should turn. You can strafe, you can do all this type of stuff, right? So anyway, camera water collision sets it to where if you are above water, the camera stays above water and it doesn't actually dip down underneath the surface of water. But as soon as your character goes underwater, now it's, it, it clips at the top and doesn't come out of the water. I like that. But in general, I like to be in full control of my camera. And if, it, if I'm above water or below water, I don't like it to just randomly be clipping. So I'll I leave this unchecked. And this auto follow speed here and the camera following style, I set mine to never adjust the camera. The, how, what the game can do is whenever you're running and you turn around like this and you let go, the game will spin your camera back around to be behind your character. I don't like that because sometimes I do want to look over my shoulder as I'm running forward. And I like to be, again, in control of my camera. Cool. Next interface option right here is your name. This, this turns on your name above yourself at the top. I don't know why you'd want to see your own name above your character, but you could if you wanted to. NPC names, I have this be the option which shows hostile enemies, quest people, objective type things, and interactive NPCs, people you can actually talk to for a purpose. This option would be every single thing has an, a, a name plate above them. Again, a nameplate is a good example. This guy right here, this little cow person right here, they have a nameplate. This is a health bar. Two different things. Critters and companions, you don't need to turn those on. No, leave those nameplates off. Friendly nameplate, sure. Minions, enemy players, enemy minions, okay. So like we just said, we have names and then we have nameplates with actual health bars on them. So always show, I'm gonna unclick this and you see how the health bar has gone away. No, 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 always show these nameplates. Um, you can have the nameplates be even larger if you want. I have threat plates. I have a whole video on these, on my threat plates if you wanna watch that and update that for an add-on. I like them way better than the default UI. Uh, but you can also change these options here for the base thing of what you wanna show. What what nameplates do you want to show? Show enemies, minions, all this stuff. Friendly nameplates. I don't like showing friendly nameplates because I'm not damaging them. Maybe if I was a healer, you could want to show friendly nameplates. That might make sense. Flash on aggro losses for a tank when it, the, the actual health bar flashes. If you lost aggro of something and it runs away, it's like a visual alert. And motion type is stacking or overlapping. If you have a whole bunch of enemies all clumped up together, you can set it to where they stack on each other and they never overlap and they just kind of like grow outwards or they overlap each other and the health bars can literally be on top of each other. Next up for display, we have hide adventure guide. I'm going to hide the adventure guide alerts. You can leave them on if you want to see all of those alerts, but I turn those off. In-game navigation is the quest markers and world points. You actually can have spots where like, oh, I'm going to go this way and it has that little thing that pops up and it shows the, the distance counting down. That's what that is. Tutorial, you can turn on tutorials if you 
or new to the game and you want to make sure you learn everything or reset it if you like thought you missed something and you really want to make sure you know everything's at or you can just watch my videos next is the status text which shows you show numeric values percent values or both i have both turned on because it's just whatever the game is wanting to express in that moment i'm fine with that that's that's the default chat bubbles this was a big thing for some people you can exclude party chat so if people in your party say something you can exclude those chat bubbles to where that doesn't pop up i turn this off because like in dungeons and stuff i might not want to see all of that popping up on the screen and I, I i'm pretty good at looking at the chat to know when someone's saying something but if you want it to be more of an rpg experience and see people chatting and talking like you normally do you can turn that on to all and then you see that or you can exclude everybody Raid frames, this is for those raid frames that pop up on the side over here whenever you're in a raid. You can display whatever you want on those things. I like having the class colors turned on so that all the different class colors, I can look over the raid and see them whenever who's getting low and all that kind of stuff. Display pets, I usually turn off. I don't want to see those unless you're in something like the old school, like Ruby Sanctum type stuff where you have some sort of mount or pet you have to keep track of. You can turn those back on if you want to see that. I have power bars turned off because it, old school WoW when I was a tank and I needed to know the healer's mana, that really mattered. Now it doesn't really matter, so I have that turned off. Show debuffs, all that kind of stuff, all pretty self-explanatory. Next thing is the action bars. Uh, this is where I have my action bars. I have, I have all these turned on. Now, I do use bartender for my, my bars. All of these down here are bartender. I do have a full video for bartender. I have, I have a decent amount of videos at this point now. Let's go. So in general, I usually do show numbers of cooldowns. I usually do have both of these turned on where it locks them in place, but I usually don't, I even usually have these hidden. Uh, so I do like to be able to pull them off because I'm not ever clicking down here and I don't click my buttons anyway, so that shouldn't matter. And then show the cooldowns. I use Omni CC for the display, so I don't have to worry about that either. Combat now, personal resource display. If you've ever wondered what that thing is on your character that's underneath your feet that has your health and mana bar or whatever it is that your character uses, that's what that is. It shows underneath your feet. I have it weak auras and shadow unit frames and all that kind of stuff, so I turn this off because I don't want to see that because I create my own user interface that I want to see that for. And if you want your own user interface based on all the stuff I have, uh, my Patreon, I have links to every single add-on, every single weak aura, every single macro that I use uh, to help thank you uh, to all the patrons that support what I do here to make this all possible. So cool, there's a little that. Raid self highlight highlights your character in a little circle. You can change it to an, just an outline or both or none. Target of target, you can turn that on or not. I do like the target of target because if I'm tanking something and it's attacking someone that's not me or whatever, I kind of want to know that. And if you're a DPS and the tank's getting low, you might want to know that as well or a healer or whatever. I think target of target's pretty good. You know whenever you get low health and your screen starts flashing red, if you want to turn that off, this is the option right here. Do not flash screen at low health. I'm a tank. I want to know when my health's low. Uh, I, I think it's valuable and just another visual indicator, so I'm leaving that off, as in I want to see it. Uh, loss of control alerts. Yes, show me whenever I've lost control, etc. Sometimes it's hard to see with a big scheme of things. Uh, scrolling combat text to self. I personally don't want to see the combat text, the damage of the, what I have on myself. I'm fine with leaving that off. I, I just want to see how much health I have. I don't care about individual instances of damage. I just care where my health bar's at. Mouse over cast. Now this is pretty interesting. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do for mouse over cast and you can take a button. Let's say it's a heal or something and I have flash heal and I've bound it to button four. If I press button four, I'll use it like normal, but you can do a mouse over cast where you can use alt control or shift and put a modifier on it and it turns into a mouse over cast. No, no, please, please don't use this. No. If you want to use a mouse over, it should look like this. Here we go. I'm on my priest now, and we got that flash heal I talked about. This is what you should do. I have an entire video on macros and everything like that. Here's a super quick example of this. Uh, hashtag show tooltip slash cast space bracket at mouse over comma exists close bracket open bracket close bracket the spell you want to do. Uh, I will put this link down in the description as well, just if you want to grab this uh, quickly up for yourself. And what that does, I put it right here on button number five, is flash heal. If I don't have a target whatsoever, it casts flash heal on myself. It's healing me. If I have a target, this random person right here, and I have this warrior targeted, I flash heal and it's flash healing them. But what the mouse over does is if I mouse over this person right here, and now I press it, it prioritizes my mouse over. So if I have a mouse over, it casts the heal on them. And then if I don't have a mouse over, it casts it on my target. Cool. So now when I have a class flash heal, you'll see I'm healing that person instead of that person over there. That's how mouse over should work. That's so simple. There should not be some sort of button you press. Please don't do that. Moving on. The self cast key I never use. It's alt. 
Uh, I would honestly, yeah, okay, there we go. I'm putting it to none. There, I just I just fixed my, my own settings right here, so thank you all for that. Focus cast key, I also don't turn this on. I have this off. I, t I use macros for this as well. I usually have shift modifier B for that, but only for certain abilities, and I have full macros for that as well. And for empowered spells like the Drakthir, let me show you. Whee! <laughs> Drakthir is so cool. Okay, so for the Drakthir, they have an ability, this little fire breath situation, right? So this, I have to hold it down and then release, right? Um, that's kind of how that thing works, but there's a better way to do it. In my opinion, I like the feel of it much better. I really honestly at the beginning did not like Drakthir and some of their type of abilities, and the default is hold and release. So for these charge up spells, you hold it down and then upon release, it releases it. I like the press and tap. So press and tap for me is much better so that whenever I go to press this ability, I press it, my hands are up, and then I press it again to shoot it off. With how long WoW's been out, pressing an ability to do it just makes more sense than this whole hold thing, so I would change that if I was you. Spell alert opacity. Spell alerts are the things that baked into the game, these little weak aura type things where a certain proc happens and this thing comes up on your screen and you can see it. Here's an example. There we go, this right here. This is the default Blizzard UI. It shows a certain thing. That is what I want. Now, myself personally, I do a whole thing with weak wars. I, in fact, I was just actually opening up. <laughs> I was just opening up my weak wars just for, to show that. Uh, spell alert opacity turns the default ones down to nothing. So I personally turn all of those down to zero and I create my own weak wars. Now, if I have an alter something or I'm leveling something up for the first time, I will turn that back up because it's nice to have them by default. Press and hold casting is kind of interesting. I don't don't really necessarily like it. I'll show it while I'm here on this drag there is uh, normally you'd have to press like like a bunch of times. I think you can probably hear myself pressing this W button. But what this press and hold thing does is it lets you it's very strange, it's not working for me, but the whole concept is that you press and hold the button and it just keeps casting that spell over and over again. So you just hold down and you could spam one spell over and over again. Either way, I'm not too upset that it's not working for me right now. I turn it off because I like the control of being able to do that. And I, I could see myself like not lifting it up soon enough and accidentally starting the cast when I didn't want to. I don't know. Enable action targeting is actually interesting. It feels weird. I don't use it, but I could totally see this being a viable option. Uh, in general, if I'm moving around, I, I left click to target things. That's one of the only, that's the, the only thing I click in the game. All of my abilities are bound. I, I click the different targets that I want to target, right? Um, what enable action targeting does is again my hand is not going to click anything it is i'm uh, see that it automatically targeted the closest thing to me as i run down this list it is automatically targeting the closest thing to me very interesting and if i run over this way it's going to automatically target this thing that's really interesting like now it's and now i'm targeting over there and just because i'm closer to this but it's targeting towards what i'm moving towards it's actually very interesting i honestly might try this out and just actually play the, around with this because it's pretty cool in fact i'm going to make a note for myself right now but again i could see myself probably not doing that because i do like control i don't want things to automatically happen for me i like to be able to control things and then there's so many times especially as a tank i could see that i'm going to be here and i want to run over here but keep this thing targeted and i have mouse over things and so honestly i'm probably gonna actually delete that note and not use it man that was a roller coaster anyway social settings is a mature language filter you know what that is you can turn it on or off curse words and stuff right uh guild member alert lets you be alerted for guild members i'm not even in a guild whatever uh block trades i don't know i mean if you really just don't want people to trade you ever then sure block them block guild invites uh that is something usually whenever i make a new character that's not part of a guild it's really annoying to get spammed with guild invites so that you can turn that on these have to do with blocking and not letting you display uh, your character's achievements uh chat channel invites all that kind of stuff showing online friends i usually turn this off because if i'm in the middle of making a video i don't like it whenever my friends come on or offline or whatever in the middle of a video it's just kind of annoying to me broadcast updates displays a message from the blizzard when your a battle tag friend comes online or updates their broadcast no 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 the only thing i don't know what this is is the show toast window enable this option to display blizzard messages in a toast window i don't know what that means i think that might be the whenever you have a support ticket that thing pops up i don't know i've not i don't know what a toast window is comment let me know chat style i like the classic style the old school style before they updated it to this weird im style i like all my whispers to be in one it's very annoying whenever i had my chat and someone would whisper me and it'd be in a new chat and i would have to delete that chat it's, i didn't like it i didn't like it so i like the classic style and the whole new whispers thing is what exactly what i'm talking about i, I like to put it in both it makes a new tab and i can see it because sometimes i wouldn't even know because i didn't see it in my main whisper log or my main chat log whatever uh chat timestamps don't care about that and reset chat positions sometimes you can get it lost or whatever so you can reset it back to normal. And no, I'm not signing into Twitter.
Key bindings, oh man, key bindings. Uh, I have an entire video overhauling key bindings and everything that's coming out soon. I have three videos on key bindings. It's gonna take your key binding game to the next level. I promise, stay tuned for that. And there you go. That is the gameplay settings for your, all of this for accessibility, colorblind mode, all that kind of stuff. This is specifically for what you have for your games, your graphics, audio, language, network, all that kind of stuff for whatever you want specifically for you. So I hope I have specifically helped you with your game in some way. If you have, let me know, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. This is a small little channel. We're trying to grow and do some big things here. So stay creative, think outside the box. Peace.